It opened. Boy, how did it open? Adam Cole versus MJF. What a great freaking match this was. Awesome, awesome, awesome wrestling. To the point where, about 20 minutes in, I began to uh, look up the best opening matches ever. I don't think it's as good as Brett and Owen. I don't think it was as good as Daniel Bryan and Triple H. Those are just Mania matches, but... For an opening match on a free TV show, you will be very, very, very hard-pressed to find anything better than this. Uh, they did, as you no doubt know by now, do a half-hour draw. It was the fastest 30 minutes you'll have all year. Flew by. Just flew by. To the point where, when the bell rang for the time limit, everyone in the world was caught off guard. In fact, because they had done such a good job of making it clear this is the point Adam Cole was going to win, he, uh, he caught... MJF with a super kick, then finally hit the Panama Sunrise for the first time in the whole match, then hit the boom, and the people are going crazy, and the ref counts one, and the ref counts two, and the bell rings, and if you have not watched this yet, or even if you have actually, go back, there's a fan in a green shirt, he's basically right above the referee on the screen, when this bell rings before Adam Cole gets the three count, I believe it's the worst moment of this fan's entire life, he breaks. He just breaks and goes ballistic. He's very frustrated his man Adam Cole didn't get this win. Uh, that's the big picture. The details are you had MJF mocking HBK because, of course, he said Adam Cole is Shawn Michaels' favorite. And, he, and the best part is he mocked him only to eat a super kick and come, come up spitting blood, which is great. Uh, we had the little things like there's a submission exchange and counter wrestling in the uh, second half after the break. And you just watch MJF. The reason he's like... So, so, so great. Because other guys who are who are even better technically skilled, but it's when he's in an ankle lock and he has a chance to transition to a cross face and gets a fiendish grin when he knows he's got this Adam Cole fucker now. And then Cole's reaching for the ropes and MGF reaches over and cranks it down with a huge bug-eyed stare. This is what makes MGF great. Uh, MGF keeps trying to cheat and fucking up. He... The ref gets bumped. Max is giddy. Absolutely giddy. He tries to do the Eddie Guerrero trick. But the ref is too bumped, and now all he has done is give Adam Cole a weapon. And Adam Cole is no angel. He doesn't heavily hesitate. He just waffles MJF with a belt. And uh, that set up a near fall, but the ref is counting too slow. Uh, still down, still counting slow, so uh, Max could kick out. And MJF hit a low blow, tried to use the dynamite diamond ring. The ref blocked the punch. That set up the super kick, and that's how we go home. So there you go. It is a draw. Adam Cole demands five more minutes. MJF, of course, declines. That was awesome. He didn't even mention the two scariest things in the entire fucking match. The tombstone of the apron? We had a tombstone of the apron, which looked like it killed him. And then we had an elbow off the top I did not mention that. MJF. That's actually a very important point. Adam Cole, which also looked like it killed him. I'm glad you mentioned that. Because the setup for that was, uh, early on, there's a spot where they're countering all their big moves. MJF tries the heat seeker, but Cole pushes him off, and MJF was flying and lands on his face in the middle of the ring. So 20 minutes later... MJF tries the heat seeker again. Cole tries the same counter to push him off again, but MJF has learned he lands on his feet, hits a knee, and then hits the heat, street, heat seeker for two. And when that doesn't work, he knows it's time to get desperate. To, you know, this is the time to take risks. And he puts Adam Cole on the table, hits a big giant elbow off the top rope of the table, and tries to win by count out. It didn't quite work, but they set all, all, they set all that up brilliantly. Everything made total sense. I don't know if this is where he got it or not, but for a guy that allegedly hates New Japan so much, I'm watching these MJF matches, and that fucking spot where uh, Cole is he's going to go for the boom or something like that, and and uh, right when he's about to go for it, MJF just collapses on his face. Yes. That's an Okada spot. You know? That's an Okada spot right there. I'm, the, I'm a big MJF fan, but sometimes I think you just can't trust this guy. And not only that, but I mean, you know, don't watch New Japan, but you're telling me that you know enough to... Bring up the name Great Okan. Yeah. Call him the best worker in all of New Japan. And, and, listen, if I'm MJF and Okada's not available, there's exactly one guy that I want to have a match with for the title, and it's Hiroshi Tanahashi. That match is totally up MJF's alley. Totally up his alley. And uh, that just happens to be the match for uh, for Ben Door. So a lot of coincidences there. Match was great. Uh, 30 minutes just flew by. Adam Cole is a tremendous baby face. I mean, these fans were so into Adam Cole, and they hated MJF. And he did every heel trick in the book because what is old is is new again. And, uh, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't put the stopwatch on. I thought about it, but 
You know, they they usually don't fudge times or anything like that. Dave said this was uh, 2958. I think that's human error. I think this was exactly 30 minutes. But uh, one damn way or the other, this was a perfectly timed finish. Yeah. And they pulled it off great. And Cole demanded the five more minutes afterwards. MJF left. Of course, later MJF gets challenged by Tanahashi. He says he ain't doing that match. They made it very clear he's only defended the title three times since he won it. And so I think that it's going to come to a head where Tony Khan demands that he probably give... I I would guess it'll probably be that he has to give Adam Cole another title eliminator. I don't think he'll just sign the match because we've got months until either All Out or All In, whichever show they decide to do it on. And uh, you got to have some storylines. But, uh, yeah, this match was awesome, and there is more to come. A CM Punk hype video airs with new footage. I believe it's the first new stuff since the all-out fight. He says he still has scores to settle, still has things to do. He doesn't know what he'll do or say until he has a mic in his hand, but he's got a lot of things to get off his chest. Can't wait. It'll be newsworthy. Can't wait for it, You know what it's going to be? It's going to be a relief. It'll be done. It is? Yeah, it'll be done. It'll be a relief for somebody like you. It ain't going to be a relief for me. I see. And it ain't going to be done. You but, kidding me? Yeah. Maybe it won't be. But it would be nice if you just arrest on a show like everyone else and we can just move on with our lives. Renee I interviews. remember you said that when that ESPN interview comes out tomorrow. Well, <laughs> then it won't be done and I'll be wrong. See, I don't have a problem with anyone I'm wrong about things. And if I'm wrong about this, I'll say I'm wrong. But right now, until you mentioned this, until you got my, my uh, what's the opposite of getting your hopes up? I've crushed your dreams again. Basically, yes, yes. Well done. That's my gimmick. Rene interviews Sammy Guevara, who says he's going to be a dad. He's not the world champion. He still wants to be world champion. He comes out, and the fans are just booing this guy. And then Rene says, congratulations, you're going to be a father. And they cheer. <laughs> and then she says, you know, it's going to be a baby girl. Actually, I think he announced that. He said that, that yes. And that got a big pop. Then he goes, you know, I still want to win that AEW title. And they booed. It was weird. Uh, like he was getting the what treatment, but I think it was like four or five very loud people. Well, then uh, then Darby comes out, yeah. congratulates Sammy on the baby. And he says, you know, sounds like these fans are starting to love you again. <laughs> Which there was not a lot of evidence of that. Hmm. But as soon as he said that, it kind of got a mixed reaction. But then everybody decided, ah, fuck it. Let's play along and start chanting Sammy's name. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good way to put it. That's, yes. that's exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I guess, you know, they've just, I don't know if they've forgiven him yet, but, you know, I think i think maybe they're, you know, sometimes you, you, you get mad about something and, uh, you know, after a while you're still mad, but you don't even remember why. Sure. And I think that fans kind of are, are you know, they were really mad that he proposed to that, his original fiance and then you know they split and he went with ty mellow because you know how it is with wrestling fans like you know no one has more than one relationship in their life right it's it's just it's one and done for all of them well but many, not sammy many wrestling fans never get to that one sammy you see he dated someone and then he decided that he was going to date someone else so he's a despicable person to these fans and uh but now you know they they're still together, and they're married, and they're having a baby. And I think fans are kind of like, ah, fuck, good for this guy. He's going to be a dad. He's got a baby girl on the way. Ah, I don't need to hate him anymore. I think that's where we're going here, but I could be totally wrong. So Darby comes out, and it says, congrats on the baby. How long? You, but, he sa- but he asks, how long are you going to stand in the shadow of the Jericho Appreciation Society? Don't answer now, he says. But I think I know what the answer is. So this pisses off Chris Jericho, who comes out to answer. And he's dressed like Chris Jericho. He's all in black, got a leather jacket, carrying Floyd, which turns out to be an important point, with pink sequined high-heeled boots. Yeah, what the hell were those things? I don't know, but they were for Chris Jericho. So he points out, you know, Sammy, you were chasing that world title for three months. You never called me one time. If you had asked for Chris Jericho's help, you'd be world champion right now. To which Sammy replies, well, you didn't call me either. In the meantime, you were losing to Adam Cole twice. Jericho wants Sammy to apologize right now. Sammy won't apologize for shit. Jericho says, I know what we should do. We should do a tag match. We should reunite the sex gods so I can show you who the boss really is. 
Darby is laughing at this. He says, Chris Jericho likes to call himself a wizard, but the magic is gone. Now Jericho's pissed at Darby. You really want to challenge Chris Jericho all by yourself? And Darby says, well, I'm not really alone. And it's Sting. And Sting comes out. And yes, for the first time, Sting and Chris Jericho in the ring together. Jericho has the black baseball bat he's been using for like two or three years. Sting has the black baseball bat he's been using for 25 years. They have a stare down. They see who's more intimidating with the bat. Sting is, of course, more intimidating. Jericho backs down and leaves without Sammy. That was awesome. It's a big match next week. Uh, the tag Sting match and Darby versus Jericho and Sammy. That's huge. Are you wondering what Sammy's going to do? And, uh, yeah. And Granny, did you know that in the room right now is an Emmy Award winner? I know. I want to congratulate wow. you, Wow. Thank you. The only one here who's ever achieved anything of value. Nice work, Shane. <laughs> Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Let's see this big gold Emmy. Wow. Look oh, at that, nice. everybody. Oh, Holy wow. smokes. That qualifies. That's Prefer to hold it by thing. the bottom to it as well. Let's get a picture for the front page. Yeah, you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Granny, they say that Washington is a hot spot for UFOs. Is there any connection between aliens and Bigfoot? The animals are aliens. What? So you're telling me that my cat is from another planet? Yes. Due to Brian's birthday, Brian versus Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy looked a foot taller than Brian. He's not a foot taller than me. God. He's got the big poopy hair. He's, he's maybe. What is that noise? This was sure. with you and Vinny against uh, Chris Drysack and Ideal Mexican. 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 Yeah. Yes. Brian pulled uh, Chris's panties down in the back. Yeah. His, his panties. <laughs> yeah, he saw his Drysack. S A J W N G A W N. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.